In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the IPC B52IRX3. This is a 3x2 megapixel cam. It's a 1 over 2.8 CMOS sensor with three separate lenses. They record at 25 frames per second on all channels. It has 8 infrared. It is one of the most powerful infrared on a bullet camera that I have seen. It does include IVS with tripwire or intrusion. It supports motion detection. It can hold one terabyte SD card. It has a mic and a speaker for two-way talk. This bullet cam does have a couple unique features not seen on other cameras. It has a 12 volt output connection and you're also able to tilt the lens remotely and at the camera. It does support EPOE and is IP67 rated. We're going to take a look at some of the video footage to see just how powerful this camera is. You can see in these clips, the IVS detection works pretty well, day and night. The end of the driveway is about 90 meters or 295 feet. And the camera is mounted at the minimum height requirement at about 3 meters. They are calling for detection at 100 meters on the specification. I believe if you were to aim the camera straight on, you would get better results on the detection. This camera is at a slight angle and you'd probably have better results if it was up a little bit higher because the lenses are all the way up in the up position. When I tried human detection at that range I did not have very good detection but I was able to have detection at the nighttime in a completely dark environment. When setting up the IVS rule it only allows you to set the rule on the first camera lens. When drawing the rule, it does allow you to expand the other two lenses so you can get a more accurate layout when you're drawing the rule. And we'll go over this more when we're in the camera settings. You can see in this nighttime clip that the IVS rule is tripped when we get out of the vehicle and get back in. Here we'll look at the camera when it's facing a dark area with the infrared lights off. The camera is at a very sharp angle in this location. The downside to this angle is the infrared reflects off of the house and it's hard to aim as the adjustment screws will move when it's at a very sharp angle and they're hard to get to with the T15 security torque. Here you can see that I'm about 54 meters or 178 feet out by the tree. You can see with the three different lenses it really draws the image in to be able to recognize the details. You can see with the powerful infrared that this camera has, it has no problem seeing in the dark. It also will self adjust for each lens at different distances. After you log into the camera and go to the live view, you can see your three different lenses. You can select them in any order that you'd like, and you can select mainstream or substream. stream. 
at the bottom you're able to move around the screens into different views you can enable or disable the view mode for the AI you also see the auxiliary calibration you can set how high the camera is this also lets you do the lens adjustment and you also can do the image adjustment. We're not going to spend much time in the web interface. We'll just cover the highlights. When I go into my AVS setup, you can see I'm only allowed to set the cam one or lens one in the panorama view. I press next. I already have rules set up, but we'll take a look at what I did. For rule number one, I have set a tripwire. To be able to view that rule better, we can come down in the panoramic view and go to full screen. Now you can see that my rule is set up, but it's kind of hard to get the fine details. I can press escape to get out and I can bring up the distant view. I can select full screen and now I'm able to adjust the rule or draw a rule if it's a new one more accurately. It does have event linkage for emails, audio linkage, etc. I want the record to be enabled and then I can tell it which channel that I want the IVS. And here on the channel I'm only allowed to select the panoramic view because all the IVS's are only set to channel 1. On the global configuration I can set the sensitivity under the camera image you can see that I can do a self-adapted day and night switch and customize scene just like all the cameras with the new web interface on the encode, all the lenses are restricted to 25 frames, but I am able to change all of the settings independently for each lens. And also for the substream. The overlays, you can also select those independently for each different lens and also the region of interest. The audio, again, it does have two-way talk, so it has a speaker and a microphone built in. Your alarms and video detection is under the event module. Video detection is set up the same way as all the cameras. The red is what is active. You can also set the threshold and the areas. The video detection can also be set up independently on each different lens. The anti-dither would be the amount of time in seconds between alarms or before the alarm would sound again. 
The video detection does have an event linkage, which you could set off the audio alarm. But it does not have the smart motion detection on this camera. Video tampering, scene changing, audio detection, and one click disarm. It does have the capability to record on the edge or an SD card up to one terabyte in size. If you wanted to record 24 hours a day, you'd have to set your generals. And press apply. This is about all we're going to cover in the camera as the rest of the features are the same in all of the web 5.0 interface. Thanks for watching the introduction of the B52 IRX3, the long range perimeter protection bullet camera, part of the Multivision series.